Hey, it's Dan. Welcome back. This is I Allegedly. And I've got a good one for you today because so many people with their cars are upside down and even underwater. So a lot to cover today. As always, guys, hit the like buttons. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Um, you can email me at hello at iallegedly.com. And today we have a sponsor, Native Path, and I'll talk about them in a bit. But as the economy has gotten worse, one thing that has happened is that so many people have realized that they are upside down in their automobiles and they have negative equity. They owe more than what the car is worth. And the problem with this is that this is just not something that, oh, it's a few people, it's a few thousand. No, it's a huge percentage of people right now. Think about this. People driving down the road right now, when you look at these people, 31% of all those cars are considered upside down. So that's every car driving down the street. It doesn't matter where you live. It's just the average car. Now, here's the, the staggering figure. Cars that are from 2022 and newer, so new cars, guys, new cars, it's almost 40%. It's 39% of those cars have negative, negative equity and are upside down. Now, the problem with this is that this creates a problem. And from a guy that's selling a couple cars right now, the thing that you find out is that you can't get today what you could get a couple years ago. That's just not there. People don't have the money. Uh, the wholesalers are not paying uh, a realistic price for it. And people are having the car stuck in a lot longer than they did before. Now, that doesn't mean that there's not deals out there. If you're looking for a deal, this is a financial channel, guys. We talk about getting a good deal out there. And you need to do that. You need to do your research and and get the car, not just walk into a car. It's funny, my brother and his wife have been looking for two specific cars, one car for a relative for them and one car for them. And since June 1st, that was the day that they started, still have not found the car yet. And they look every day. And he called me the other day and said, can you please drive to Riverside and look for this car? And I said, wow, okay, well that's, guys, it's like 40 miles from me, which is not a big deal and I do it for my brother. But the point was, was that it was, um, you know, make sure the car's available. Don't, you know, just let's, let's go check it out. Car was sold by the time uh, he tried to set the appointment up. What you're seeing also is this. Think about these figures that I'm going to give you. And I was blown away. I want to thank Dave and David for both sending me all this stuff because two subscribers that always contribute cool stuff. First things first, before the latest hurricane, there were 89,000 cars that were upside down that had water damage. Okay, that's horrible, guys. Cars that were considered flooded, cars that were considered destroyed. Now, here's the thing about this. When you go look for a car, people sit there and go, oh, does it smell bad? Does it smell like it's been sitting in a lake, you know, with fish swimming through it? You know, that's one way of looking at things. But guys, there are all these telltale signs. And this is such a rampant problem right now when it comes to buying cars that Carfax even has a free um, site that you can use where you can check to see if the car has been a victim of water damage or not. How about that? So that link is below too. So you can check the VIN number and see if it's been sitting there because there are unscrupulous people in every industry, let's face it. But in the car industry, you're not supposed to sell a car that has been floating in a lake or was flooded because of a hurricane. Now, when you add Hurricane Helene into the mix, wow, guys, think of the cars. Think of the thousands of cars that are destroyed right now that people are going to have to get rid of. Now, the insurance company are going to pay some of these people off, and some of them are going to get damage to them. But if, if they have water damage on a car, you think that they just throw the car away and they piece it out? No. Somebody wholesales that thing out, buys it for a couple thousand dollars, and then... Um, and then uh, sells it again to some poor sap. And But most likely what they do, if they had any sense, is that they would ship it to a different state and try not to get caught for doing, doing that. But that's the problem, guys, is that it's unbelievable. I spoke to a woman that worked for a bank, and she said, oh, Dan, the stuff we would see. And she told me these stories driving here today. Water damage was one thing, and flood, fire, fire sprinklers going off over a car and destroying the car. But the car is, you know, a year and a half old. So you don't know that. 
But you have to look at things like the door panels. Is there rust underneath the car? Now, I live in a state where we don't have car rust. It's not, you know, we don't have snow on the ground. There's not salt. We don't deal with any of that stuff. But you have to look at this. You have to look at all these things. Look at the headlights, which I'm thinking so many people have damaged headlights. So that could be a sign that the car was sitting there floating um, underwater. And you have to look at these things and be more careful when you buy these cars. One rule of thumb that I've always had with buying a car was finance. If you have to finance it, finance it for 36 months, 36, three years. Now people sit there and go, oh man, that's not very long at all. I want to put nothing down. That's the thing. CarMax, I'm telling you, 29% interest rate that they're charging people and uh, people are putting, what's the least amount I could put down? Well, okay. Wow, that payment's really high. Well, what can you do? I can do seven. I can do eight years in the financing now. Okay. The car's worth nothing, guys. And there was another article that my brother sent me that was insane where some guy had a GMC uh, car and the negative equity on the car, meaning the car, he owed $60,000 in the car and the car wholesaled out at $33,000. The lot the dealer that looked at the car said listen here's what you should do you should just rent the car out go to toro toro is a car rental place kind of like um uh airbnb you know it's one of those type of services but you do it for your car i've had people that have rented cars with this service before but guys how do you treat a rental car seriously plus you've got a car that you're financing for god knows how long that's upside down over 30 grand in equity and uh, 65, it was $32,000 in negative equity the guy had. So with that, what are you going to do? Seriously, you're going to rent it out and let some, some schmuck rent your car. I mean, this is where people don't get it. You know, the, the Airbnb debacle, how this is such a great thing to do. So many people are upside down in Airbnbs and so many people are having difficulty with this that it's not working, but you're, you should go rent out a car with negative equity. This is the end of your, your financial collapse starts today. <laughs> That's all I got to say. I am telling you from a guy who has done this, not never 30 grand on a car, but 5,000. Oh yeah. Pack that into that car. And eventually one day I had enough money, and paid the car off. And everybody's fantasy land is that, oh, I'm going to make so much money this year. I'm going to completely turn my life around and this is not going to be an issue. Okay. How about last year, the year before, the year before that? Now you throw into the economy, you throw in the port strike, you throw in the turmoil with the election, the Middle East, you throw in, um, you know, Hurricane Helene, and you haven't seen anything yet, guys. You haven't seen anything yet. But again, warning after warning after warning that you've been given that the economy is not doing well and you can ignore that. But this negative equity in the car and all these people owing all this money, I mean, it is crazy. More people have payments that are above five years, 60 months. So what's that, seven years, eight years? I mean, come on, guys. People go out and buy very expensive cars, McLarens and Ferraris and Porsches and you know even Corvettes, stuff like that, that they spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in these cars and then finally then it really can't afford the car can't afford service can't afford anything um there is a joke that my friend sent me about the repair in his bmw and that is just how it is you know uh it's brutal let's put it that way i can't even share the the meme because it's so graphic and dirty and awful when it comes to getting your car worked on um I bought a Land Rover once from my brother-in-law and my brother-in-law was the most anal human being in the planet. And what, um, what I did was my sister drove the car and I'm thinking, well, this guy changed the oil every 3000 miles and he was just such a nut when it came to it. So I didn't have to worry about it. That wasn't the problem that I was right about that. I got a great deal on the car. Problem was when I took the car in for service, I went to the dealership. Oh my God. That was horrific, guys. Horrific. And people don't look, sit there and look at it. You know, to sit there and do, oh, this should just be a minor tune-up and oil change. 
Oh, your brake pads are bad. You know, it's uh, $1,632. Huh? Huh? Okay. So remember this. Okay. High-end cars. The woman that called about working at the bank, she bought a Toyota, and she says, tell them about my, my package to get the car work done. She hemmed and hawed in buying a car and totally could afford it with the Toyota uh, Corolla she bought. And how about if we gave you unlimited service? What does that mean? Well, it's unlimited service. We will fix everything for you with your car payment. Oh, I'm not. I can't afford that. <sighs> Gets up in the car, was literally going, to, where are my keys? Get into the car. We're going to throw that in. What if we threw that in? So that service package was thrown in and she bought the car. And recently she had the car worked on and she drove over there, dropped the car off and they Ubered her home and then Ubered her back to the dealership once the car was done at the end of the day. That's the way you do it, guys. Let me know about this. Let me know what you think. Very, very overcast out here this morning. Let's talk about our sponsor, Native Path. You know, so many of us, as we get older, suffer from pain. And what we do is we generally take ibuprofen, but this only masks the problems. It's a temporary fix. But think about this, heart disease, kidney failure, blood clots, those are all on the warning label for an ibuprofen bottle. It's downright dangerous for seniors to even take this. The older we get, you need to stay away from that. What you can do is you can get Native Path, which is uh, filled with omega-3 fatty acids. It, it comes from naturally caught krill, and it makes a huge difference. It doesn't mask the problem, it's a solution for you. If you go to getnativepath.com forward slash Dan, you can check it out and you can save big. It's very inexpensive. Use the link below. Native Path, it works. So many people have ordered it. But again, guys, you don't want to take a temporary fix. You want to get rid of the pain. The older we get, things become more uh, debilitating. Get Native Path today. Check it out. So many of you have ordered it. Getnativepath.com forward slash Dan. few more car things that I find interesting, you know, uh, first thing, salt water and the lithium batteries that are in your EV cars do not mix and they can create a fire and an electrical hazard. Here's the thing about this. If you have an electrical spark and you have, let's just say an underwater garage that gets filled with water, you could, the lights could go, a lot of things could happen to where you could have, you know, electrical shock hazard and people need to be safe. But the thing that's fascinating about this, I was gonna kick at these old guys that swim too. The thing that's fascinating about that is that, you know, we haven't seen what the wear and tear is on an electrical car with getting wet like this. Are they gonna last? Now here's the other thing. I was talking about free service before. There's an article below about this. Ford is going to install your car charger. Now, here is the thing. There were all these questions. Now. Unless you're an electrician or your brother-in-law's an electrician or you know electrical work, seriously, what kind of charger do you need? Oh, I need uh, 110 for mine. I just plug it in. Really? That's it? Well, there's all these different things you have to know to get an electrical car and the amperage and the uses and the, all these different codes and figures and stuff that I was blown away by. Ford, if you are you know stupid enough to buy one of those electric cars, they will install the EV car charger for you at your home. Now, again, that sounds great. What if you rent the house? Oh yeah, don't worry, I just, just tap into the, <laughs> the power pole. Okay, you're gonna get people that are gonna do stuff like that. Now, one thing I wanna, I, I just blew over earlier in this video and I wanna bring this up. Carfax is a great service. If you buy any car, you should get a Carfax. But then, what are they, $30, Dan? Yeah, okay. Well, was the car in an accident? Um, the stuff, like, again, the stuff this woman told me this morning in just our brief conversation about how people lied and people misrepresented the state of a car happens all the time. But Carfax has a free uh, uh, site that you can use to check to see if it's water damage. Check this out, guys. Just put your information in there. But it gave all these different things that you should do and look for for the telltale signs of water damage, which 
again, I'm very lucky because I have a friend who is a really good car guy. And he is just, I mean, he loves to get deals for himself. He loves to get deals for people and he loves the challenge of that. That's the guy you want doing that. So the other thing is people leaving California, Gen Zers are leaving California at a complete record pace right now. And they're sick of it, sick of, uh, of you know, all the ridiculous laws, sick of the crime, sick of the homelessness, sick of everything that's wrong with it, and the taxation. Here's the one thing. A great day in my son's life was, hey, man, this taxes thing, what can I do about that? They took out, they took out $700 out of my paycheck this week. Isn't that great? Nothing like being single and claiming zero, son. Oh, my God, this is terrible. This has got to be stopped. You can't stop it. Huh? Going to pay it forever. Gonna pay it forever, brother. So the other thing that I was really proud of is that I have a friend of mine, Chris, who's a brilliant guy. And Chris is a multimillionaire. And Chris owns a nice big house in Louisiana with a huge lake. And he's just doing really well. Got a great wife. Everything's cool. Chris in high school realized that his father could not afford college and he wasn't going to college. Look at this guy swimming out here. What are you doing for exercise? Are you swimming like this? I'm walking on the sand, tripping over the sand. This guy's swimming miles in the morning. Anyways, Chris decided, what can I do that would make the most amount of money with my hands? And that was to become a welder. Now, what you're seeing is more people that are Gen Zers that are becoming plumbers and skipping college and going to trade school, which is what you should do. And again, the one thing my father did that was brilliant that I never understood is as, as a child, as a kid in junior high school, uh, you're going to work for us. You're going to be building room additions this summer and pouring concrete and learning all this stuff. Huh? Okay. Okay. It was the best thing ever for me because I can fix my own car. I can build things. I can have hot women say, can you come over and paint my house? Yeah, yeah, watch, quick, let's make me dinner. <laughs> anyways, I digress. You know what I mean? So anyways, good thing. A lot of people are doing this. School sucks. Remember that. It's too expensive. Okay? Maybe that's what I'll title this video. Something else. Just a few things to finish this video with. Guys, we have an uncensored channel called I Allegedly Live. And uh, I love this because it's all the stuff that we can't talk about here. And I've got some videos, some cool stuff to share with you. We can talk about politics. We can talk about things that have happened in the past. And uh, we can get into it. You know, it's very, very cool. Um, check it out at iallegedly.tv or use the link below to sign up for it. But check it out today. Now I'm going to finish this video with these last few stories and um, certain companies are not doing well right now. Nike sales are off a ton right now and they're going to have a new CEO in the next few weeks and he's got to deal with this sales slump. Here is the problem guys. We've talked about this over and over and over again. Do you want a sweatshirt okay, like this that would cost 25, 30 bucks or do you want to go buy a Nike one with a little swoosh on it? That's a hundred. Oh, let me think, Dan. No one really notices the swoosh when you wear it. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? There's that. ABC News, good riddance to them, uh, is firing uh, 75 staffers. Bye. See ya. Okay. Couldn't happen to a nicer group of people. The Disney group is having a difficult time right now. Huh? Isn't that nice? And the final, final story, which I'm like, wow, this is really a thing. 7-Up is going to issue a new flavor. Which, when was the last time you saw 7-Up in the store? So let's go get a 7-Up. My mom used to make me drink it when I had a tummy ache. Anyways, 7-Up is now going to have Shirley Temple flavored 7-Up. So, double the sugar, double the <laughs> maybe, the maybe they can sponsor here. Do you like Shirley Temples? Come die allegedly. Anyways, don't forget to like, subscribe, take a look at our sponsors. It's a minute out of your life every day. Anyways, onward and upward, guys. I will see you guys very soon. You can always send me stories. And thank you to Dr. Marvin, David, and Dave, 
and everybody that sent me stuff today because it was all good and Debbie for her contribution. Okay? I'll see you soon.